हेलो व्यूअर्स ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ इंसॉल्वेंसी एंड बैंक्रप्सी बोर्ड ऑफ इंडिया आई नमीशा सिंह मैनेजर आई बी बी आई अलॉन्ग विद श्री राजेश कुमार गुप्ता सी जी एम आई बी बी आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस टेली लर्निंग सेशन विच इज़ अ पार्ट ऑफ लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन इंसॉल्वेंसी एंड बैंक्रप्सी कोड टूडे विल बी डिस्कसिंग ऑन द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द प्रोफेशन ऑफ इंसॉल्वेंसी प्रोफेशनल्स दिस सेशन विल बी डिवाइडेड इन टू टू पार्ट्स In the first part of the session, we'll be having an overview of insolvency professionals, and in the later part of the session, we'll be discussing over the quintessence of the development of the profession of insolvency professionals. Without much ado, I now invite Sri Rajesh Kumar Gupta ji to kindly take us through the first part of the session. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Namisha. Sabhi ko mera namaskar. As uh, my colleague Namisha was already mentioning, we are discussing today on the new profession which is the uh, profession of insolvency professionals as we call it which came into being pursuant to the enactment of the ibc that is insolvency and bankruptcy code 2016 if we get into the little meaning of uh, the the word professional it actually in terms of britannica dictionary means someone who does a job that requires special training education or skill or someone who is a member of the profession so this is what we mean by the word professional though we have large number of professionals in the economy these days like medical professionals and legal professionals the insolvency professional is the first of its kind a new kind of a professional which developed over a period of time pursuant to the enactment of the code and now we have been developing the profession by various capacity building initiatives etc which we are going to discuss little more in detail but first we'll try to understand what is the status structure what are the kind of obligations of the insolvency professionals what is the expectation from a insolvency professional under the code next slide please so in terms of professions in a modern economic sphere we are finding that the professionals these days are literally working along with the state on behalf of the state to exercise oversight on firms the professions are becoming a key institution in a market economy and india as a market economy is growing so accordingly the professions and the professionals also are growing along with the economy the need for professional services has been increasing more so because new and new professions are coming into being because the economy has been expanding and they are also influencing and making the economy as we go along examples of the professions which have been going are as i mentioned already in terms of say medical profession the doctors the lawyers the chartered accountants insolvency professionals company secretaries and there are many more so as we go along we'll just discuss the details in terms of what these professions are expected to do insolvency professionals are an outcome or insolvency is an outcome of the market forces so accordingly what was being felt as part of the code was to rightly the code has rightly envisaged that a market process for resolution of insolvency has to be put in place and a key supporting institution as part of the market forces as part of the code is the the institution of insolvency professional in insolvency professional exercises the powers of the board of directors of a firm a firm which is under distress and which is undergoing insolvency the board of directors is suspended and a insolvency professional takes place of the, uh, the the board of directors the suspended board of directors and accordingly acts on behalf of the firm by making all the decisions which the board of directors of the erstwhile firm were expected to make so it ensures compliance with all the laws of the land the processes the various kind of provisions of the code of the various other laws on behalf of the firm he conducts the entire insolvency process the resolution process and is the fulcrum of the entire process the entire process is revolving around the main pillar of the ibc ecosystem which is the insolvency professional so we'll just also understand what actually happens in, with the insolvency professional in terms of expectations from the insolvency professionals what the, the process requires is that it attempts to balance the interest of all the stakeholders there are very conflicting kind of claims which are there there are various stakeholders be it the the, the creditors be it the financial creditors the the operational creditors the various other stakeholders who are there and they all are having conflicting claims the employees of the company the tax authorities the other government authorities the people who are supplying raw materials or utilities to the company so we require a person who is an unbiased kind of a person who takes independent decisions 
in in line with the guidelines under the code and he will take a decision which will balance the interest of all the stakeholders and these are all conflicting interests so the law law has cast a duty on the insolvency professional as a independent kind of institution so as to have a independence in the entire process as part of the cirp that is corporate insolvency resolution process the the insolvency professional organizes all the informations which are there he prepares a information memorandum he collates all the claims which are there runs the process brings all the creditors the committee of creditors on the same page in terms of decision making invites resolution plans from the prospective resolution applicants and once these plans are uh, uh, submitted then he will evaluate the plans and probably uh, help the coc in taking a decision in terms of the resolution or maybe a liquidation so he has to have various kind of a balancing in the interest of various stakeholders large number of stakeholders who are there they have varied expectations from the insolvency professional for example he has to abide by the laws by the code by the rules regulations guidelines or and uh, as per the code of conduct also he has to follow as part of the process the debtors expectations from him as part of the process are that he would enable recovery a quick recovery the resolution sensitivity on the avoidable transactions from a perspective of the creditors the expectations are timelines have to be met because time value of money who can better understand than the bankers with minimal kind of haircuts and debt settlement at an early date in terms of adjudicating authority the expectations are they want the resolution professional to be well informed and self sufficient every ra himself i mean they want that his resolution plan should be selected he should be uh, declared as a successful resolution applicant pursuant to the process and knowledge and understanding and evolving jurisprudence are important from the perspective of a uh, uh, insolvency professional as part of the process the various challenges which are faced because of this conflicting interests and all and it's a very strenuous kind of a process time taking and because all the stakeholders have to be brought in on the same page various kind of conflicting requirements are there so non cooperation from the promoters is what he has to probably surpass he has to uh, make the positions in a manner that he is able to uh, clear these kind of problems the non availability of books of account the financial results are not there or they are inadequate the cash transactions which are there in the company related party transactions he has to unearth as part of the cirp process he has to also determine avoidance transactions on top of it whatever claims are submitted that also he has to Uh, probably uh, find out whether which claims are acceptable which claims are not acceptable then he has to also prepare a information memorandum and circulate it the information memorandum to various parties so that he can get a good registration plan now in terms of development pre and post the registration what insolvency and bankruptcy board of india has been doing to continuously enhance the capacity of the insolvency professional pre the registration we have a 50 hr course which has to be done or uh, there's a uh, limited insolvency examination which has to be carried out which the the uh, professional who's applying for a insolvency professional has to pass an individual with the requisite qualifications experience fit and proper criteria etc can only be fit to uh, register as a insolvency professional with the board having passed the limited insolvency examination and my colleague namisha will tell you little more in detail about the qualification and experience criteria of these insolvency professionals the insolvency professional having been registered as a professional has to continuously go through a continuous professional education programs so as to update him so as to keep him abreast of the latest developments and he is aware about what all is happening in the markets in terms of assistance to the insolvency professional there are stakeholders who provide various kind of assistance as per the, uh, the the kind of provisions of the code the law facilitates and empowers the ip to discharge his responsibilities effectively so only all these provisions have been put in place for example the code empowers the insolvency professional to appoint professionals to assist him during the process he can also take the services of a insolvency professional entities which are corporate bodies or llps all officers of the firm which is undergoing distress which is being trying to be resolved those officers have to help and work in close cooperation and also the promoters of the company has to work in close cooperation with the insolvency professional so as to ensure that the resolution is possible assurance of supply of essential goods utilities and services when the process is on so as to have a going concern concept as also to maximize the value of the assets of the company is ensured by way of a moratorium which is brought in under the code 
wherein no coercive mechanisms can be put into place. All the litigations are put on hold during this period, and the person is free to probably employ all his energies and time in resolution of the company. Going forward, what are the various steps in terms of monitoring the IPs which IBBI takes? It provides appropriate sanctions and penalties for any kind of wrongdoing. So there is a code of conduct which is administered by the insolvency professional agencies, and any kind of complaints, any kind of a uh, problems which we foresee or which we see as part of the process or observations which come from the adjudicating authorities or from various stakeholders, we try to ensure to take whatever best possible kind of a redressal of these kind of problems which are faced in the ecosystem, and these complaints are redressed. We have a well-defined kind of a complaint redressal policy in place. and these grievances which are received are addressed against an ip besides the protections which are available to a insolvency professionals as part of the process are the appointment and removal can be done only by the adjudicating authority he has a protection the insolvency professional has protection against the actions which are taken in good faith his conduct can be investigated only by the ibbi or the frontline regulators which are the insolvency professional agencies and that also after following the due process for the purpose there is a bar on trial of offences against an ip except on complaint which is filed by the insolvency and bankruptcy board of india and the insolvency profession is in its infancy the ips have to strive very hard to build its trust credibility of the markets against uh, uh, on them so that there is some kind of a uh, credibility which the markets have and market is able to trust the various decisions we say insolvency profession is a institution of public faith wherein public and the various stakeholders have put in lot of faith on the institution of insolvency professionals and because of which only we have been able to achieve the kind of success we have been able to achieve over the last around 6 years with this i think uh, i'll now request my colleague namisha uh, to take the session forward over to thank you, you sir for such an insightful session Uh, viewers now i would like to begin with the second part of the session which is development of the profession of insolvency professionals bankruptcy law reforms committee which laid down the foundation of insolvency and bankruptcy code uh, envisages the profession of insolvency professionals as one of the four p- uh, pillars of institutional infrastructure of the code to achieve the objective of timely resolution value maximization and balancing the interest of the stakeholders so this carves out the uh, importance of the role of an insolvency professional as an insolvency professional shoulders the responsibility of managing the affairs of a corporate debtor to achieve that the corporate debtor is uh, undergoing uh, on a uh, going concern basis so it becomes essential that an insolvency professional is being governed by a well laid regulatory structure Uh, the insolvency professionals are being governed by a two tier regulatory structure ibbi being the principal regulator and insolvency professional agencies being the frontline regulators insolvency professional agencies have been entrusted with the functioning of enrolling an insolvency professional dealing with their complaints and grievances uh, conducting capacity building programs for the ips and conducting educational programs for these insolvency professionals Insolvency and Bankruptcy Board of India has been registering insolvency professionals, have been inspecting and monitoring them, and um, adjudicating, uh, so as as to ensure that uh, the IPs are working in an order. Uh, the insolvency professionals are being governed by the provisions of the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code. apart from the provisions of the insolvency and bankruptcy code the insolvency professionals are being also governed by certain regulations such as insolvency professional regulations inspection and investigation regulations and grievances and complaint handling procedure regulations in the insolvency professional regulations the procedure for registration as an insolvency professional has been laid down along with the eligibility criteria that is required uh, to become a registered ip along with the qualification and experience that is required to be an insolvency professional uh, the insolvency professional regulations also lay down the code of conduct which is to be adhered by an insolvency professional 
uh, in brief code of conduct provides that an insolvency professional shall act with uh, integrity and act with objectivity in all his professional dealings he shall also be independent in his professional relationships he shall maintain confidentiality of information and uh, charge re uh, reasonable remuneration for the provision of services that he is providing etc so apart from all these regulations for the purpose of transactions an insolvency professional is required to be well versed with certain other regulations and rules such as application uh, to adjudicating authority rules corporate insolvency resolution process regulations voluntary process uh, regulations liquidation process regulations fast track ins insolvency resolution process uh, insolvency resolution process for personal guarantors to corporate debtors regulations and bank bankruptcy process for personal guarantors to corporate debtors regulations so what is the very first step to be an insolvency professional the very first step is to pass a limited insolvency examination which is being conducted by the insolvency and bankruptcy board through online mode on all the working days there is no restriction on the number of attempts of how many time an individual would like to appear for this examination the format of examination is uh, of a multiple choice uh, pattern which has 50 questions of one mark each and 25 questions of two mark each with a negative marking of 25% on every wrong answer this uh, examination has a total of 100 marks which expand uh, for a duration of 2 hours so the passing score for this examination is 60% and above and for the matter of study material insolvency and bankruptcy board of india has not recommended any study material however the frontline regulators have been encouraged to provide mock test on their website which have a similar st structure as that of the limited insolvency examination so that it encourages the professional members of the ips to appear in the limited insolvency examination and pass the minimum uh, scoreage which is 60% and above moving on uh, what is the eligibility criteria for an insolvency professional so uh, an individual needs to be an individual resident a fit and proper person with integrity reputation and character having absence of conviction restrained orders and he should be financially solvent an individual is ineligible to be registered if he has not been uh, if he has been convicted by any competent court for an offence involving Uh, imprisonment imprisonment for a more than 6 uh, months or for an offence involving moral turpitude provided that if a person has been convicted of any offence and uh, which has resulted in imprisonment for a period of 7 years or more he shall not be eligible to be registered uh, qualifications and experience of an insolvency professional has been laid down in the regulation 5 of the insolvency professional regulations which says that an individual needs to first pass the limited insolvency examination to be an ip and along with that he should be enrolled with an ipa within 12 mon months of passing the limited insolvency examination and he shall also take a pre registration educational course from uh, an insolvency professional agency along with this uh, he should also have at least 10 years of experience as a ca cs cma or advocate or 10 years of experience in management with a masters degree or 10 years uh, experience with a bachelors law degree or 50 years experience in a bachelors degree of uh, with management in case an individual has passed a graduate insolvency program then the requirement of this experience subsides however then individual has to take the limited insolvency examination along with the pre registration educational course after being enrolled with an insolvency professional agency after being registered as an insolvency professional uh, an ipa on the request of an insolvency professional either issues or renews an author authorization for assignment authorization for assignment is an authorization which is provided to an insolvency professional so that he can undertake assignment under the insolvency and bankruptcy code moving on to the capacity building uh, uh, of an ip so before being registered as an insolvency professional uh, the 
individual is to undertake a limited insolvency, uh, insolvency examination and a pre-registration educational course which stretches out to 50 hours which is offered by an insolvency professional agency. So looking at uh, the uh, importance of the role of an insolvency professional, it becomes essential that the uh, skills and knowledge of an insolvency professional is upgraded on a continuous basis. So before and after registration of insolvency professional, uh, an individual has to undertake the continuing educational programs so that uh, he can keep up to the market forces. The uh, Insolvency and Bankruptcy Board of India had issued the IBBI Continuing Professional Educational Guidelines which are known as CPE Guidelines which came into force with effect from 1st January 2020. It is a market-led competitive framework to meet post-registration professional development needs of an insolvency professional. These guidelines take care of the need of post-registration development needs of an insolvency professional. Insolvency law is an evolving area and capacity of IPs need to be augmented continuously to enable them to deliver on the mandate of profession. There is a minimum requirement of 10 CPE credit hours in, in a calendar year and minimum of 60 CPE credit hours in a rolling block of 3 years. CPE activities can either be conducted by the principal regulator itself IBBI or the frontline regulator IPAs. It can also be undertaken by uh, other organizations such as Registered Valor Organization, which is also a frontline regulator for the profession of registered valors. They have a similar structure as that of insolvency professional agencies. These activities can also be undertaken by universities or statutory professional institutes or any other ent entity which may be approved by the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Board of India. In the CPE guidelines, as I mentioned above, uh, certain learning activities have been mentioned which may be undertaken by an insolvency professional. These activities may be workshops, attending of workshops, conferences or seminars in the insolvency area or publication of journals, newspapers, publication of articles and publication of books in the insolvency regime. He may also complete a two-year PG course or a PhD or pass a limited insolvency examination or valuation examination. The board has been undertaking one-day or two-day basic workshops and advanced workshops with newly registered insolvency professionals with the view to augment their existing capacity. So far, the board has organized 26 such basic workshops and with a view to further enhance their capacity and expertise in niche areas. IBBI had uh, been un undertaking uh, advanced workshops for these IPs who have already taken the basic workshops. Such 15 advanced workshops have been undertaken by the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Board in areas such as forensic audit uh, sale uh, during liquidation, sale as a going concern during liquidation and analysis of financial statements. Apart from the basic and advanced workshops, IBBI also organizes, organizes certain seminars, webinars, workshops on various new developments, whatever comes in the insolvency ecosystem and for this, IBBI has been calling experts from India and abroad. So last but not the least, let's talk about the concept of the graduate insolvency program. So the graduate insolvency program uh, provides for a direct eligibility for registration as an individual uh, of an individual as an insolvency professional after passing the limited insolvency examination and uh, after taking an edge. Uh, 50 hour educational course from an insolvency professional agency. This is the first of its kind program which is being uh, uh, conducted by two institutes identified by the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Board. These two institutes being the Indian Institute of Corporate Affairs which is an autonomous body under the aegis of Ministry of Corporate Affairs and the National, Institute, uh, National Law Institute University Bhopal. The, the first batch of this graduate insolvency program commenced from 1st July 2019. This program structure, um, this program structure 
uh, stretches to a 24 months duration which is divided into two parts the first 12 months of this program uh, is a residential classroom kind of program wherein uh, uh, the uh, individuals are being prepared and specialized in the area of insolvency and thereafter in the next 12 months uh, this is an hands-on internship, internship type of program wherein the uh, individuals are being uh, uh, trained as an intern with the insolvency professionals, banks, financial institutions, legal firms or insolvency and bankruptcy board of India itself. With this, uh, we have come to the end of the session, folks. I hope that uh, this session has been beneficial for, uh, for the viewers. I once again thank Sri Rajesh Kumar Gupta ji for taking us through an, uh, such an insightful session. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Just to add on a few things, uh, uh, because time is still there. So, uh, Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code is a new law which is evolving. The jurisprudence is evolving. The case laws are coming up lot of interpretational issues are being settled and along with it the entire ecosystem itself is growing and the capacity is evolving. So the new profession which has been also brought into shape, the insolvency professionals, that is also growing, that is also the capabilities are being expanded by way of continuous kind of capacity building programs which are conducted by the board, by the insolvency professional agencies and by several other universities, institutions, national universities etc and also by the insolvency professionals themselves kind of writing articles, maybe penning books, etc., and conducting several workshops and all. We also have a concept of train the trainers wherein we have utilized the service of the World Bank and the Foreign Commonwealth Development Organization wherein we have trained certain of the insolvency professionals who now become our resource persons to train further insolvency professionals. So those kind of things are going on and we have to continuously build the capacity, the capability, the competency of the insolvency professionals because the job has several challenges which have to be overcome as we go along and the whole attempt as per the objectives of the code is to try to resolve the company rather than to put into liquidation. Liquidation is the path of least resistance. It's a very easy kind of a proposition but resolution has its own challenges and we have to continuously strive for the betterment and for a win-win situation of the economy and all the stakeholders be it the employees of the company be it the suppliers of the company, be it the taxation authorities, in the long run, they are expected to gain in a big way if the company survives and the company continues to operate, manufacture goods, create production, create employment and the, the, the taxes which are paid for the growth of the economy. So that is what we have to achieve. And the last six years itself, just to give you a few numbers, the code has been able to achieve around 2.35 lakh crore of Indian rupees by way of resolution of the stressed assets as also large number of cases have been settled or resolved outside the court or in the shadow of the court and which has resulted in another kind of a resolution of the stressed assets of around 7.1 lakh crore. So in all the code has been instrumental in resolving stressed assets of around 8.5 lakh crore approximately with the active support and cooperation of the fulcrum of the entire ecosystem which is the insolvency profession. And we have to work together to bring further glory to the IBC code. With this, I think we will end the presentation. Thank you everyone. Thank you, Ramisha. Thank, Thank you. you. Sir.